All right, let's talk about work scheduling. You've identified um, the work, you've decomposed it into manageable chunks, uh, you've estimated roughly uh, how big each chunk is. Now you need to put them in some sort of a sequence because you need to do something first, and then you need to do something second. So you need some manner of sequence in which to do it. And this is work scheduling. Uh, again, there are two schools of thought uh, with this. One is the, the formal management, the, where um, you create a, a Gantt chart full of dependencies and, and associations. So there are um, uh, sequential tasks are arranged together and uh, tasks that can be done uh, simultaneously and in parallel are identified. But importantly, the dependencies of what must be finished before something else can start. That gets identified. Uh, this is the classic project management using uh, Microsoft Project or Primavera or any one of a number of other uh, tools that will produce uh, Gantt charts, as you see there. Uh, these are useful uh, when you have a, a fairly large, fairly formal um, project that requires um, uh, multiple teams in multiple locations. So when, when the coordination between them all has to be a bit more formal than everybody get in the room, then, you, then a Gantt chart uh, is a pretty good way of doing things. The other extreme, uh, I'd say extreme, the, the absolute extreme is where there's no planning at all, and I don't, don't recommend that. Uh, but to contrast with the formal Gantt chart planning, I'll talk about backlog um, planning because this is quite popular in um, agile software development. That is, you get all the tasks and you just put them in a big stack and you arrange them by priority. Now the priorities uh, a mix of the dependencies, uh, which piece of functionality needs to be done first because somebody wants it, uh, what needs to be done because something else depends on it, um, and what can what can we do? Uh, but in in some fashion, you arrange them so that you get the higher priority ones on the top. Then you uh, essentially you start at the top and you pop the first task off off the uh, top when you start working on that, and you go until you finish that, and then you do the next task. If you have several people working, each one takes the the one off the top of the stack. Now, importantly, in this approach, you need to keep monitoring the stack, and you need to keep adjusting and uh, adjusting the priorities and shuffling the, the uh, higher priority task to the top. In um, commercial software development, this allows the stakeholders the um, the ability to influence what comes out next. It also requires the discipline for the stakeholders to understand they can't do everything all at once. But um, it's, it's gradually it's becoming accepted and uh, works reasonably well. So that's backlog planning. You'll find some form of backlog planning um, is associated with all forms of agile software development. Uh, I have no particular uh, favor with one or the other. I think small projects uh, suit backlog planning. Um, but so many of the so-called small projects and agile projects now are beginning to use uh, outsourced teams and um, distributed teams, and that requires more coordination than uh, informal discussions can do. So those are the two um, scheduling um, methods that are most popular.